One option for the UK after leaving the EU is to stay in the European Free Trade Area. A free trade area is a group of countries who promote trade between member nations. To do this, countries don't put taxes, tariffs or quotas on each other's goods. Tariffs are taxes placed on goods from other countries. If the UK left the free trade area, then the area would be able to put taxes and tariffs on our exports. This would make them more expensive and far less attractive to European customers. Quotas are limits countries set on the number of goods which can be imported and exported. If the UK were to leave the free trade area, then the EU could determine how many of each type of product could be sold in the area. 44% of the UK's exports go to the EU, worth nearly a quarter of a trillion pounds a year. So having the ability to sell as much as we want tax-free to the EU is a big advantage to the UK. There are two other ways of encouraging international trade you might have heard of. These are the single market and customs union. The main difference between the free trade area and the customs union is how the members of each group treat external partners. In a free trade area, every nation in the area is allowed to set their own tariffs for external countries. This means that all members of the European free trade area can place their own individual tariffs on goods from the US. In a customs union, all of the countries involved set the same tariffs on external countries' goods. Because of these differences, free trade areas are a bit open to exploitation. Hypothetically, let's say that France and Australia are both in a brand new free trade area, which means there's no tariffs placed on the goods the two countries trade. America isn't part of this new area, which means both countries can set their own individual tariffs on American goods. France choose to set a higher tariff on America than Australia do. To get around this, American companies can set up a subsidiary business in Australia. They can ship their goods to their Australian business, paying the smaller tariff, then export tariff-free to France. Despite this, free trade areas do offer greater opportunity for countries to negotiate deals with other countries on a more fine-grained level. Some countries see it as more beneficial to be able to carefully select their trading partners and protect local industry more carefully, rather than handing over control. Also, some industries can be exempt from free trade areas. For example, the UK could negotiate to keep agriculture, fishing and other important industries out of the free trade agreement. This would still mean we could put tariffs on other countries' agriculture, fish, etc. There is already a free trade area in Europe, and it's called the European Free Trade Association, or the EFTA. This includes all of the countries in the EU, plus Norway, Switzerland, Liechtenstein and Iceland. Access to the free trade area does come with its own costs. Switzerland isn't in the EU, customs union or the single market, and yet they're still estimated to pay nearly £450 million a year in return for their access to the free trade area. The UK doesn't have to be part of the free trade area to trade with Europe. The EU does have trade deals with countries outside the EU and the EFTA. However, going it alone and negotiating a deal with the EU from outside the EFTA could be tough and result in tariffs, taxes and quotas being put on UK exports, which could damage our ability to trade with the EU. As mentioned earlier, the free trade area isn't the only option the UK has. The UK could, with the EU's agreement, choose to remain in the single market or customs union instead. To find out more about those options, click the links in the video's description or head over to tldrnews.co.uk forward slash Brexit.